Beyond determining the winner in this game, this clash aims to uphold and perpetuate the democratic spirit cherished over the past 30 years. This football match is more than just a game. It is a symbol of our unity, our shared values, and our collective determination to move forward together. Football, often called the beautiful game, mirrors the principles of democracy. It thrives on teamwork, fair play, and respect for rules. On the field, as in the democratic process, every player has a role, every voice matters, and every effort contributes to the collective goal. Mr. Speaker, this match will bring together members from across the political spectrum, showcasing that, showcasing that while we may have different views and affiliations, we are united by our love for our country and our commitment to its democratic ideals. This celebration is also a tribute to our citizens who have entrusted us with the responsibility to govern. It is their unwavering support and active participation that have fortified our democracy. As representatives, we must always remember that our strength lies in the diversity and unity of our people. More football, whether it's the starlights, whether the satellites, whether meteors or um, the senior team, the black stars or the twinkle, twinkle little stars, the princesses, is the passion of the nation. And apart from the fact that it brings us together in the form of socialization, it's another way of people you know, exercising. You know, so I think that this particular um, democracy cup is a unique one. It's the first of its kind that has been instituted. As the maker of the statement rightly said, it's an opportunity for all of us to come together to exercise, to socialize, to cheer our teams up. And also, to, it's another form of, you know, coming to, together as members of parliament. So don't let us see it's just like um, another football match between Accra and Tofu. This is our democracy cup. This is for Parliament. This is part of the 30 years anniversary celebration, and this is the climax of it all. And I treat all of us to be part of the ceremony. The Speaker, I'm very happy that we have chosen sports as a mark of marking this event, which is celebrating the 30 years of our democracy. Sports is a unifying factor and football is the pulse of this nation. Over the years, it has united people from various ethnic groups, from various political groups, to pinch their fortunes on a team, and mostly our national teams. And I'm happy the speaker made mention of the Black Stars, which we all rally around whenever they are playing their matches in, 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 the, in the African Cups. The Speaker, democracy, as we all know, is a very important political system that allows countries and groups and institutions to elect their leaders or to have their leaders put in place in cordiality, in understanding, in a way that allows the majority to rule. Mr. Speaker, the Democratic Cup that you have inaugurated and we are playing today, I believe that from next year, we will also be rotating the matches so that the rest of this country will see what democracy is doing for us. Mr. Speaker, as far as we are talking about democracy, naturally, it's the government by the people. And I believe that whilst the good people of Ghana have the opportunity to elect their MPs, have the opportunity to elect their presidents, and have the opportunity to elect their assemblies, uh, assembly members. It is time that we showcase this democracy cap to enable the people to also elect their DCs or metropolitan municipal district chief executive. I believe that that is the biggest gap that has been left. 
Because if our people are sensible enough to be allowed to elect their president, to elect their parliamentarians, and to elect their assembly members, then the government at the local level, the head of the government at the local level that controls the money, should also be accountable to its people. And I believe that going from next year, Parliament might have to have a special debate on this matter to make sure that we support whichever government is in power to make sure that our DCs are also elected. Mr. Speaker, that is one of the best ways to eradicate the problem of winner takes all in our country. My worry, Mr. Speaker, is that for good 30 years, what has been the grading, the assessment that we give to our practicing democracy in this country. Mr. Speaker, are we really practicing democracy? Have we reflected soberly on the things that are injurious to the practice of democracy? The match that we are going to play is one sure way of bringing people together. It's one sure way of promoting unity. But I think, critically, we are over-politicizing issues in areas where institutions are supposed to be the key stakeholders in the practice of our democratic principles. I'm not happy, and I know a lot more Ghanaians are not happy with some of the things that are going contrary to the principles of democracy. Mr. Speaker, let this democracy cap remind us of three things. One, Mr. Speaker, coincidentally, this year is an election year where Ghana will undertake presidential and parliamentary elections on 7th of December. This democracy cap must remind us that we should be sportsmen Good sportsmen accept defeat and they celebrate wins. In this election, there will be a winner and there will be a loser, whether at the presidential level or at the parliamentary level. So one of the consequences of your initiative is for us as a country to accept that in a football match, after 90 minutes plus additional time, there will be winners and losers. And therefore, we should accept it. Mr. Speaker, I also think that Football unites Ghana. Therefore, one of the opportunities we are creating today is for us to reflect, as I said, on our freedoms and the democracy and seeking to unite the country. Now, today, Mr. Speaker, even in constituting the football team, there will be no NDC or MPP. It will be strikers, midfielders, and defenders made up of all our political parties.